Sofia Jukavo was born in 1939 in the village of Zvyagino, Nizhny Novgorod Oblast. She didn't receive formal education and worked as a laborer for most of her life. Sofia faced a lot of sorrow. Several of her children died at a young age. Over time, she moved to Khabarovsk and settled in the village of Berezovka in a multi-story building on the second floor of building number two in the Sorokolaiya Pavdi quarter. Until retirement, she worked as a laborer in meat processing. Strong and resilient beyond her years, Jukava had a raspy voice, which led the residents of Berezovka to nickname her Sonia Sipatoya. There, Sofia married and gave birth to two sons. Rumors had it that both boys found employment in law enforcement. The quiet pensioner lived with her family on the outskirts of the city for many years, not drawing much attention to herself until her husband passed away in 2005. Whether her husband acted as a restraining factor or his departure greatly affected her mental state is unknown, but she became confrontational and engaged in frequent disputes, threatening people with violence. No one took her eccentric behavior seriously, which turned out to be a mistake. Acquaintances noted her coldness, insensitivity to others' pain, and dislike for pets. Jukava was also thought to have a tendency toward alcoholism, though other neighbors, less categorical in their statements, said that the old woman took care of herself and went for walks every day. However, in 2005, she committed her first crime. On December 14, 2005, a girl named Nastia Alexenko was returning from school with her friend. The girls reached Nastia's home, bid each other farewell, and went their separate ways. Nastia was supposed to go up to the second floor to her grandmother and grandfather, with whom she lived on school days, but they never saw her. At 1.30 p.m., her grandfather became alarmed since his granddaughter hadn't returned home. After calling her friend, the grandfather learned that Nastia was last seen when they parted ways and entered the building's entrance with an elderly neighbor, 66-year-old Sofia Jukava, who once scolded them and Nastia for making noise in the hallway and threatened. I'll knock your hands and heads off. The family of the missing girl contacted the police. Running away was immediately ruled out as she had a good relationship with her family, was beloved, and was never harshly punished. The whole village of Berezovka was searching for Nastia Alexenko, the police, volunteers, everyone. Flyers were spread all over the area. After several days of searching yielded no results, the investigators soon called in Sofia Jukava for questioning. The pensioner knew Nastia quite well. The girl supposedly visited her when her husband was still alive. They would draw together, have tea, and the schoolgirl asked her not to tell her parents about her visits to avoid getting scolded. The old woman added that after her husband's death, Nastia never visited her again, and on the day of Nastia's disappearance, she was walking ahead of her on the stairs, but some girls called out to her, and she rushed outside. Since then, the woman hadn't seen her. The narrative seemed coherent, but it raised suspicions among the missing girl's relatives. Anastasia's grandmother knew very well that she had never visited Sofia Jukava, and she couldn't understand why her neighbor would lie about it after the child's disappearance. There was my phone number on the missing person flyers, the girl's mother said. We received many calls. Someone said they saw a similar looking child. I went to check the information, but one call was different. I remembered the voice, it was very distinct. A woman called, but I didn't recognize her. She said my daughter was alive and well. I got worried and went to the police. They determined that the call was made from our sausage module and that all the employees could access that phone. About two weeks later, in late December 2005, the mystery of Anastasia Alexenko's disappearance was unraveled. On the evening of December 14th, the day of Nastia's disappearance, one of the neighbors went out for a walk with her dogs. The pets led her to a corner of a building where she saw pieces of fresh meat lying under the balconies. The woman assumed that local dog hunters had appeared and that the meat was poisoned. She took her dogs in a different direction. When the woman returned home, she told her mother about the strange findings and called the authorities. Patrol officers arrived and found only dark stains and bone fragments. The policemen didn't attach much importance to them and left. 
However, the issue of meat on the streets in Berezovka would soon come back to the law enforcement's attention. On December 27th, a resident of Khabarovsk stopped by a landfill near Berezovka. The driver got out of his car, spotted a black bag with meat lightly dusted with snow, and decided to take it home for his dog. But later, he realized he had brought something horrifying. The bag contained remains. The shock man promptly reported the gruesome discovery to the police and provided detailed information about where and how he found the bag. His story was corroborated by his brother and wife. Nastia Alexinko's mother was called in for identification. What the woman had to go through can only be speculated. The fragments indeed belonged to her daughter. Soon, the entire city of Khabarovsk knew about the brutal crime, but the perpetrator couldn't be found at that time. Gradually, life in Berezovka returned to its usual course, and the residents of the village started moving away from the horrifying events of December 2005. In March 2013, a distant relative of Sofia Jukava, a pensioner named Anastasia Makiva, 77 years old, came to visit her. The woman had sold an apartment in Khabarovsk for 3 million rubles and asked to stay with Jukava for a few weeks before planning to move to Moscow and live with her daughter. However, after the move, the connection with her was lost. The daughter and niece of the pensioner reported her missing. Investigators quickly pieced together the disappearance. On March 9, 2013, when the woman stopped communicating with her family, the mail carrier went to Sofia Jukava's apartment and delivered pensions to both her and Anastasia Makiva. Detectives decided to interview Sofia Jukava, and she explained that her guest, after receiving her pension, suddenly packed her bags and announced that she was leaving to live with relatives in Primorai. Surprised, Jukava allegedly tried to stop Makiva and even grabbed her bag with documents, but she left anyway. According to the apartment owner, she saw Anastasia sitting in a black car through the window, which drove off in an unknown direction. This story raised concerns with the police. Bloodstains were noticed on the wallpaper and the radiator. But Sofia Jukava had an answer for that too. We had a dispute with my relative because of her sudden departure. She got high blood pressure and her nose started bleeding. Anastasia was gesturing vigorously and splattering blood around the apartment. The version didn't seem very convincing to the investigators. Additionally, Makiva's daughter stated that they had no relatives in Primorai. The investigators had to find the mail carrier from Berezovka and have a conversation with her. She mentioned that when she brought pensions to Sofia Jukava again a month later, the woman informed her about her relative's disappearance. However, the mail carrier didn't believe her words about Makiva sitting in a black car and leaving. After all, Jukava's windows faced the courtyard where a car couldn't drive. Attentive neighbors of the argumentative pensioner reported that after her relative's disappearance, Jukava started wearing her clothes and throwing fragments of furniture onto the garbage heap. They also saw a dark stain near the garbage bins. This time, too, they couldn't incriminate Sofia Jukava of the crime. They questioned her as a witness but didn't detain her. Rumors about a maniac, and not just any, but a cannibal spread throughout the village, flickering and fading after each horrifying discovery. Years passed, the memory of the second crime faded, and the guilty one remained unpunished. Another life deprivation shook Berezovka in January 2019. This time, the victim was a 62-year-old janitor named Vasily Shlyaktik, originally from Ukraine. His partner kicked him out of the house, so Vasily asked to stay temporarily with an acquaintance in exchange for a rent of 10,000 rubles. Unfortunately for him, that acquaintance turned out to be Sofia Jukava. The pensioner kindly agreed to take him in, and on January 28th, the man went missing. His disappearance was noticed when he didn't show up for work for several days. This time, the police quickly identified a suspect. Neighbors living on the first floor under Sofia Jukava's apartment shared that around 2 a.m. on January 29th, they were awakened by muffled blows coming from the apartment above. According to them, Jukava often did renovations like whitewashing and putting up new wallpaper. They used to attribute the strange noises at night to renovations, but this time they reconsidered their opinion. 
The blows were heavy, as if someone was hitting with something like an axe, accompanied by male groans, followed by even louder blows. After a while, they heard Jukava mopping the floor. The man even considered going to the troubled neighbor to complain about the noise in the middle of the night, but his wife dissuaded him, which he later felt grateful for. If I had gone there while she was attacking her victim, she could have hit me with an axe too. I'd be lying there now. It's a good thing my wife didn't let me go, the frightened man recounted. The next morning, the same neighbors encountered the pensioner walking through the courtyard towards the trash bins with a tightly packed bag. That same evening, muffled blows were heard again from the apartment above as if something was being chopped. The next day, two schoolgirls found remains near the heat pipeline. Investigators had to quickly connect the dots between Vasily Shlyaktika's disappearance, the neighbor's account, and the discovery. The former partner of the janitor identified the deceased, and Sofia Jukavo was arrested. It's worth noting that the woman was physically very strong, strong enough to resist five police officers during her arrest. But who would be surprised? Even in her retirement years, she carried cast iron central heating radiators out of her apartment during renovations. During a search of her apartment, investigators found numerous bloodstains, including on the blade of an axe and saws. The pensioner vehemently denied her guilt and claimed she didn't know Schlyactic. She only saw him a few days ago drinking in public. The noise was because she couldn't sleep and she was chopping bones for borscht with an axe. The bloodstains were from her relative Anastasia Makiva, who disappeared seven years ago. This time, the stories didn't help Jukava avoid being taken into custody. She was sent to pretrial detention on suspicion of taking the life of Vasily Schlyaktik. A few weeks later, while under arrest, the old woman offered her version of what happened. She claimed that at her home on the night of January 29th, the evening before, Vasily came to her house with another man and asked to have some tea. She kindly invited them in, after which the men insulted her. The acquaintance of Schlyaktik escaped while she tried to kick out the janitor, but he fought back. That's when she hit him with an axe. While the woman was giving her testimony, the investigation continued without a pause, and law enforcement realized that the crimes in Berezovka might be connected. After all, Sofia Jukava's name appeared in all of them. Witnesses underwent additional interrogations regarding all the previous crimes. A more thorough search of the suspect's apartment was conducted, during which other bloodstains were found under the linoleum. Expert analysis showed that the blood belonged to the same distant relative who supposedly went to Primorai. Meanwhile, the suspect wasn't comfortable in pretrial detention. In February, she was placed in a cell with two other detainees. Initially, Jukava tried to convince them that she was being framed for the janitor's death. However, soon after becoming estranged from the women, the pensioner opened up and confessed to them about how she had taken the lives of Vasily and Anastasia Makiva, dismembering the remains and disposing of them in parts. But the most horrifying confession was about the girl, Nastia Alexenko. The woman admitted that she had thrown the girl's remains off the balcony to be scavenged by dogs. Her cellmates immediately informed the investigators about this. Soon, the pensioner herself admitted guilt, providing details about the circumstances and motives behind each crime. Everything was revealed, from how the blows were inflicted on the victims to where the body parts were disposed of. However, a few months later, she attempted to retract her statements, claiming she had made the confession under pressure. But by that time, the investigators had gathered enough evidence to confidently declare that Jukava was responsible for all three cases. During the trial, the bloodthirsty grandmother constantly laughed and mocked the mother of her first victim, Anastasia Alexenko. We searched the entire area then, inspected all the basements, every inch of the city. It turned out the answer was right next door. Jukava calmly looked into my eyes. No one could have imagined back then that all this time, for 15 years, I never had a day of peace. Initially, she said she scolded her for loud conversations in the stairwell, but then she gave a statement detailing how she lured the girl into her apartment and attacked her. She explained how she hit her on the head while she had her back turned, and all the other horrifying details recalled Nastia's mother, Natalia Alexenko. 
Due to the experiences endured, including during the trial, the woman began to have health issues. Adelia Vergazova, the senior investigator of the Department for Investigations of Especially Significant Cases at the Investigative Directorate of the Investigative Committee of Russia for the Khabarovsk Territory, was involved in the investigation of Vasily Shlyaktika's murder. She explained that Sofia Jukavo was not detained earlier because at the time of the first two crimes, there were no grounds to suspect her involvement. However, with the emergence of new evidence and considering the pensioner's own confession, there was no longer any doubt about her connection to these tragedies. The motives for the acts against Makiva and Schlyaktik were domestic disputes, while with Nastia, it was due to disagreements stemming from noise issues, the girls running around and playing with friends bothered the old woman. After committing her criminal acts, the pensioner would wrap the remains in bags and either throw them into the trash bins near her house or in various corners of Berezovka. A forensic psychological psychiatric examination deemed the pensioner sane. According to the expert's conclusion, she acted with full awareness. Overall, the triggers for the tragedies were insignificant, reflecting the woman's impulsive nature. Regarding other crimes aside from these three, the investigators assured later that the woman was not involved. During the trial, the grandmother often insulted witnesses and openly laughed at the proceedings, emphasizing her indifference to others' feelings and her complete lack of remorse. She frequently interrupted participants in the process with shouts of, don't lie, and made snide remarks. Toward the civilian wife of the janitor Vasily Shlyaktik, she loudly ordered her to shut up. When Natalia recounted the deceased during the trial, Jukava's mood changed drastically for the better. She began by smiling and then laughed out loud, covering her mouth when it got too loud. Vasily's civilian wife described him as a responsive, kind, and hard-working person who came from Ukraine. He did, however, have one flaw. He liked to drink. The drinking binges in January 2019 led to a falling out, after which Natalia kicked him out of the house. She told him then, if you drink, it means we have nothing in common. If you quit, I'll come back to you. That's when he began temporarily renting a room from Jukava. A week later, he came to Natalia to retrieve his belongings and said he was renting a room from a cursing old woman. He stated, I'll stay there until the end of January and then leave. She's getting on my nerves. When I asked him then, who's getting on your nerves, Vasya? Children, grandchildren? He didn't say, but eventually I realized he was talking about that one person. According to Jukava, Vasily wanted to leave for Ukraine and was saving money for it. He planned to visit Natalia after receiving his January paycheck, but instead, he disappeared. His phone was turned off. Jukava speculated that Shlyaktik denied intimacy to his wife and then suggested she should engage in intimate acts with others. In 2020, Sofia Jukava contracted COVID-19. Under escort, she was taken to City Hospital No. 10 in Khabarovsk, where she passed away on December 29th at the age of 81 due to complications caused by the coronavirus infection. She didn't live to hear the court's verdict. Sofia Jukava is the oldest and most cold-blooded serial killer in the history of Russia and the Soviet Union. Over the year of her trial, the pensioner from Berezovka gained truly global notoriety. The British and American tabloids, like the Russian media, labeled her Russian Granny Ripper and all followed the progress of her case. On January 19, 2021, the Khabarovsk Territory Court closed the chapter on the story of serial criminal Sonia Sipatova. She was posthumously found guilty. As for her sons, they wanted as little as possible to do with their mother, and only one of them appeared in court. The court found the defendant guilty in a triple episode of taking lives, including a minor's life, under Part 2 of Article 105 of the Criminal Code of the Russian Federation. Serial crimes are not common in law enforcement practice. Usually, such crimes are committed by men. History knows very few female maniacs, but in yards and kitchens, they'll speak in hushed voices about the horrifying story of Sonia Sipatova, asserting that three lives were lost due to her actions. They'll say that this oldest female serial criminal in the world didn't live somewhere in the USA, but in the small village of Berezovka near Khabarovsk. 